So we've got all these lovely new features like texturing and radial symmetry in Nomad with this latest update. So let's try and do something cool like an alloy wheel and try and use those tools, specifically the radial symmetry to get a really nice shape. Okay, so to start a wheel, we're gonna need a cylinder. It's a very straightforward shape, um, and it's pretty much almost a wheel already. Uh, if you use these interactive widgets, you can, some, uh, you can see you've basically got the shape before you've even started. Now, what we do want to do is we want to roll it so that it's vertical. So if we come up here and we come to settings at the bottom here, and we want to go to rotation around the red axis, which is this one here, X. So red is here, and just hit 90, so type in 90 or minus 90 whichever and there you go you've got it in um, the vertical position so um, there's a couple of things we need to think about really first of all so one we're going to need three parts really we're going to need the rim we're going to need the tire and then we're going to need everything else so let's make a couple of, of, of things really so we'll duplicate this a couple of times so we've got them and we'll hide these other two and we'll just start on this one at the top so this one I'm going to call this um this will be the rim uh, the trim sorry so this is going to be the bit that's inside the tire and so we're going to need this to be a tube so if we go up to our topology cylinder we've got a few things to play with here and the thing that we really want is a hole in the middle of it like that now i've got wireframe on here and i've also got if you look up here um, and you look in display settings you've got smooth shading on and off now look at the difference there, you've got wireframe on with smooth shading and it's actually it's rounding those edges for you and it's, it's just a graphical representation of a smoothing. So you've got to decide whether you want that on and off at any given time while you're working in Nomad. It's the same in most programs. Um, so for the moment, I'm going to leave that off. So, so here we go, we've got our, our basically our trim already. So. Um, we're going to now we're going to bring this rim up at the front here but one thing i want to do is make sure that we know predictably some some numbers so we can always half them um so let's go up same same place again so we've got our geometry here and we've got radius is fine what we want is this x division here and if you see here the number of divisions all the way around we need that to be predictable so i'm going to click in there and i'm going to just use good old 64. So I know now there's 64 units all the way around the side. And that means that if I want to go and do half of that, obviously it's 32 down to 16, 8, et cetera. So it's very a predictable way to, to manage what we're about to do. So um, that's, to believe it or not, we're almost there with that already. It's not a million miles off. Um, so one thing we might want to do is now we can validate it. Okay, so you want to go to symmetry and you want to go to, if they're all on, turn off X and um, Z. So they're both one and have your Y uh, all the way up. So it's Y at 32. So that's half of the main um, uh, number all the way around. So it's 64 all the way around. So we're, we're okay with 32. And we're going to bring the intensity right down so that any move that I do is only subtle. So that we do, what we don't want to do is be moving stuff and then struggling because it's it's flying all over the place. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that rim up, the trim up, and bring that out like this. And because it's radial there, you can see it's it's doing it you know really really simply. I think I do actually need to go and use move and just bring it out a little bit more like that. Just realised it wasn't quite wide enough, so I'll bring this one this way. And that gives us the back, the trim. I mean, it won't be seen anyway, but it's not the point. Um, and that is almost it. So what I will do is I'll subdivide it once, but I'll use what's called flat subdivision. So if you come here, look in your topology, and you want to subdivide, but I'll do flat and just do subdivide. Now that's subdivided it, but it hasn't rounded it. So I'll turn... Um, I've deleted the lower there as well, so you can't go back down now. Um, uh, and let's just do um, turn off flat subdivision and subdivide it one more, and then turn the wireframe off. 
And that gives me pretty much the trim that I want, or at least a good start for the trim that I want. So I can now go, I do actually think it's time to turn smooth shading back on. And I do think it's time to start making it look a little bit like a wheel. So let's get some metal going. So come down here to our materials. We'll just put a tiny bit of blue in it. I'm gonna crank the metalness right up and the roughness right down and we'll force paint it and there we go we've got a, we've got you know some sort of a of a metal looking wheel so uh go and change the environment maybe to something a little bit more suitable maybe that sort of so three fingers now rolling around just having a look what it looks like trying to get a highlight on it might be a bit too dark to work with actually that that'll be a good one for when we're finished um Let's just find something with a lot more blue in it. I'll get there in a moment. Yeah, that'll do it. I'll do for now. So I'm just going to hold smooth down and just um, just smooth a couple of areas where I can see a couple of wobbles and then back to move and just tighten down a couple of these little areas like that. And that pretty much will do it for the first for the first trim. Um, you can see I, I'm doing what's called noodling here. So even though I keep saying it's done, I'm not feeling like it is. So I keep changing um, one thing and another. Okay, so now we need to switch back on one of these other things. So um, we can turn this one on and this could be, um, so this is gonna be the hub at the center. So let's um, think about what we want to do here. So I'm gonna use the gizmo, bring that down in size, bring it forward. In fact, you can bring it with the interactive, you can bring it out a little bit as well. So, I want it to stick through both. If you want to just check it, turn off your perspective and hit snap. And you can see there, you can see it popping out or not because you're fully orthographic, you know, you're, you, you're all the way um, flat. You're not seeing any perspective distortion there at all. Okay, so if that's going to be the central hub, Let's have a look at that in wireframe terms. Um, so let's make that look a little bit more like a hub. So how do we do that? So let's do exactly what we just did. So we'll put symmetry back on. In fact, we can validate this one now. And symmetry back on. We'll use local and we want to use um, symmetry enabled. And we want to do exactly the same as we did before, 32. So it's all the way up. And we'll use the, for now, we'll use the move again. Um, we'll flood fill it because it was already having a go at it there. So, and we'll turn that wireframe off. Now, what I could do is I could just do the move like I did and just get some nice shapes for this for this hub going. Um, and you could, re you know, you can really have some fun with this even at this very early stage. Um, but another thing you can do is start, because you've got radial on, you can start using things like flatten. So if we go down here, Let's find flatten. My eyes aren't functioning today. Flatten. And let's just flatten off some of this. So maybe we should subdivide this a little bit. And now we can say, for example, you can flatten off the front like that. You can flatten off inside. You can uh, make sure your intensity is really low when you're doing this. Flatten any edges, chamfer any edges. Um, if we feel like we need anything like um, a line inside, like a, any kind of a, like this, like a detail line, you can use crease. Be careful because look how, how um, jaggedy that is there. So, you know, I would be careful with crease. There's a better way of doing that, which we will use when we come to the tire, which is by using masking. But you, you can do it like that if you want. I'm not going to use that as it happens. Um, and, and that will be enough for now. We, we, we might put one or two extra bits in there, but we, we, we are definitely getting there already. It doesn't take too long to get this kind of uh, thing going. So now what I want is some spokes of some kind. So I'm going to use another great part of the new uh, symmetry feature, which is the insert brush. So we're going to go insert. We're going to go box. And if I draw it on here, you'll see it puts me a box all the way around. Now, we, we, we know we've got some problems straight away. So first of all, the symmetry has gone 32, which we don't want. So let's change that down. We just want, um, should we have eight? See what that looks like. Yeah, eight will probably do it. And then we want to scale that down. So we want to say, um, I want that in here. I want to rotate it. And I'm actually doing the... Um, 
yeah, obviously these are the spokes so you can do if you have a go with this just do them however you f you see fit i'm not even using reference here so it would be really cool to get some nice um um reference from uh you know r realistic um alloys and just see what you think um now you can see it's still quite high poly on there so i don't want that at this stage so we'll bring that right down really down so when we move it you'll see what that does for us um and that actually again that, that that'll do it really so just validate that turn the wireframe off flood fill it with the material and now you've got that's the start of your spokes now we can have a bit of fun with that now so we can use the move tool and and again ha have a go of this and do do whatever you you see fit so you can you know you can just use move like that and bend them it's great for aeroplane propellers and stuff like that don't forget you got smooth don't forget you can subdivide and um pull the top but but tighten the bottom for example um you, you know you really you, you don't really even need me for this but you can just ha you know, get your reference if that's what you want to do and just have a go and just design um you, you alloy wheels are really organic so sp spend spend some time um really looking at the shapes that, that that you can make um and get some really nice reflections and you know fake refraction going and whatever you feel you need look out for your nice curves make sure you're getting curves into this um and that's as simple as you need to be for your for your spokes really um you can go you can go a lot more detailed than that so let's take away some of this central hub so i'm going to use the insert again so we'll use insert and this time we'll use um Let's use sphere for a moment so we'll draw a sphere on here now we just did eight i think didn't we so we'll go back to symmetry and we'll change that to eight now what we're going to use this for is a cutting tool so we will fill it with is that eight yeah and then scale it i can validate it already because i know what i'm doing um this is something that we oh no i can't validate it i need to I need to get it right before I validate it, actually. Should have, I should have remembered that. So move it around between the spokes and then bring it in. And I'm going to cut this away. So I'm just trying to line it up before I validate it like I did incorrectly a minute ago. Um, so move that around there. Make it a bit larger. I'm just looking to see if it fits where I want it to fit, which it does. And then validate it. Now I will force paint it and we'll come up here, put the pin on for a moment. So this is, and another thing to put on, I normally like it with organic stuff is outline so you know what I'm doing. So this one, this cylinder, I'll drag it to the bottom so you know which one it is, is gonna be the one I'm removing from. And this, the spheres, is gonna be the one that's doing the removing or the cutting. So I basically want the first one on, second one, tick on, I turned off, and that means it's negative, and then I want to voxel merge it. And I, um, this isn't my um, 2021 iPad, so it's got the, this has only got the 6 gig of RAM, so I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'll do it at about 300, and then voxel merge. Multi-resolution will be lost, and that'll then clip away. So that's how you start adding um, uh, details to these sort of like other areas. Now, I'm just going to undo that, because I wasn't happy for two reasons. So one, I want to um, just untick it. One, I want it to be like that a little bit further out. And two, oops, two, turn that symmetry off. I want it to be in a little bit and I want it to clip out this central bit like this because then I'm gonna put nuts in there and I'm gonna flatten it that way a little bit. Let me just keep looking all around until I'm happy. like so and then back to what we did before and then voxel merge a little bit higher i think it looked a bit jaggedy to me so let's go about 400 voxel merge and what that'll do is that'll clip it a little bit closer to the center like so and now what i can do is i can add some nuts so how do you add nuts so you want to go to insert so turn that little pin off so it can disappear we want to go back to insert and we want um, a cylinder and we'll insert them in here. We'll change that to uh, a measly little eight. We'll change the cylinder. Um, let's just rotate it. 
bring it around to the front, scale it down, because we're putting it in that hole, don't forget, like so. And then we want to make it into a nut, so we want to go up to our topology, we want to stick a hole in it, we want to, we want to change the um, constant density, so now let's just put the wireframe on so we can see what we're doing. So we've got radius start and radius end. So I'm just tweaking all of these settings in here. Make sure I've got enough subdivisions for what we're going to do. Like so. And let's bring those divisions right down. So we want something like six or eight for a, for a nut like that. And then bring the radius up, the height, and the radius, basically on the hole, we do radius start. And once you've got that looking right, you can just validate. And then I'm going to make this a little bit darker. And then force paint that. And then wireframe off, and we'll have a look at that. And yeah, it looks good. It looks absolutely fine. So I've turned that outline off now. We don't really need that. So that's another... Uh, um, uh, bit done. Um, what you can do is you can um, use the trim tool, um, but I, I, I'm not in this case. I've just noticed that that there uh, I've actually deformed that one, um, so I'm not going to get to fix that at this point. So we'll. Uh, I think the rate. I think the symmetry might have gone a little bit askew at this point. So I, I would have to duplicate that to fix it, which I'll do later on because I want to carry on. Okay, so the last little bit that was turned off was the tire. So we'll bring that one out like so. And we'll bring it down. So the tire is going to be roughly like that. We're going to go, we won't make it black yet, which you would think we would do at this point, but I'm just going to turn the metalness off and the roughness because obviously this is rubber, but I want to be able to see what I'm modeling. So I'm going to force paint it like that. Um, and now we need it to have a hole. We need to change that hole size. So I think that was correct. And um, the divisions are 66, which are, is wrong. So we need that to be 64. That's fine. And then what else do we need to change? So let's change the, um, no, no, the next divisions are right. So height is right. Um, so literally all we've got to change is the inner radius. Once we've got that inner radius going down behind that trim, then we should be good. Now I would like a bit more geometry in there, so I will actually go a little bit higher than that. Um, but thinking about it, actually I'll go higher once I've validated because it's going to round off and give me the right shape like this. So if I, if I validate now, and then I subdivide once, but almost gives me the exact tire that I wanted, really. So that, that's worked out really well. OK, so now we're going to use uh, masking rather than anything else. So we're going to subdivide it up a bit more because masking obviously relies on it being high resolution. So I'm going to go to a couple of million on this one, which is fine on most iPads. Um, and then we're going to go to mask like so and we'll make sure we've got symmetry on there we go no we did have the right one just it wasn't on local okay so now we're going to mask away so what does mask mean well obviously you can draw tires in instantly even just with that little bit of messing you can see what we're going to do there so let me just check if i've got um i did go all the way up didn't i yeah actually for the purposes of this, I'll st I'll stick it to 4 million. Now, you don't have to do this if your iPad can't cope with that, but it will look so much better for me to show you this. So, first of all, I'm going to put some lines all the way around. These are the score lines you'll see in tyres. So, again, go and get yourself some reference. Don't be don't be doing this like I am. I, I, obviously, I have looked at reference before I started this, and I've built this tyre once already for Instagram. Um, but... Um, it's better to go and uh, you know go go and get that now. Go and have a look at that now. So I'm going to bring a score line across there, a little one there, and then the, there's a lot of lines that go off like this on a on a normal tire. Um, 
obviously the treads are going to be different and, and you know and you would be you would definitely be advised to go and find um you know different treads to do so you're you know you're you're practicing different skills there so you can see even just with that little bit it's given us a nice little um a nice little pattern on that so i will do a little one around here probably don't need this but could look cool there you go now if you do make a mistake or if you want to tighten any of these down just go with unmask and just clean off any of these lines so it's just removing it away. if you can't paint a tight line go and do it that way um now once you've got that mask just hit mask tap on the screen and invert it so you've got the the, the areas that we were master now um you know you can you can move these around and we just scale them down that's all we do you can see that there straight away just indents it like that clear the mask and that's an instant tire so it's super super easy now if you want to do knobblies um you're going to have to paint on the surface and extrude it out or you can um or you can use um you can do another tire and make radial blocks so you could use insert and put the blocks on the surface and then voxel merge it together but either way it's super super simple there's nothing complex about this i'm going to put a tiny bit of roughness back um, at like shininess with us or by reducing the, the the roughness i'm not putting any metalness in obviously force paint that and then roll that light around you can see the tires nearly nearly there really and that's as simple as it gets i, I you know I, I could go crazy with this and i could start doing lots and lots of different ones but you generally can get away with just using those tools. So getting your head around symmetry, make sure you understand how to use the insert brush and then be ready with your other tools like flatten and crease and, and, and all of the normal tools that you'd get in Nomad. Um, and you can soon get yourself a tire of that sort of quality. Now, you can easily texture this up. Now, I'm not gonna do it in this video. So if you wanna have a look at uh, our texturing videos, uh, last week and the week before, there was a couple of texturing videos and everything's in there so if you look up above there's a link there to our texturing videos and um, you can have a look at that and if there's enough of a demand I, I, I will do it i'll give you one tip for your texturing if you want to drag something onto this surface and it's the, on this tire here you might need another part of the model in the middle so what i did in the past is i just put another little black um cylinder here and merged it with the tire that meant i was dragging onto that and then across onto the tire. So there's a little tip for you. So if you just wanna paint some white lines on it then, so it's tiny brush, make sure you're on dot rather than drag, um, uh, grab dynamic radius. And then you can just draw some white lines on there if you, if you feel like you need to. Don't forget you can change your, you could even, if you really, really wanted to, you could actually write your text on um yourself, but it, it wouldn't look as good as dragging, as dragging the texture on. So. There you go. So there's a, a good example of how you can do it. Um, I've done it a few times now and I'll do a more complex one. I might do a build on another video where I'll build a whole vehicle. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of doing a Batman vehicle, but unfortunately time's um, a little bit limited at the moment. Um, but I'd love to be able to, you know, to, to have a go at something like that. So let's just see if uh, let's just see if we can get that done. If you've enjoyed this video, you might want to go back and look at the videos over here on the right. Uh, these are about texturing in Nomad and we've done them recently so you can really pick up on all of these new features. And obviously don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop us a, um, a comment if you've got five minutes.